Welcome to part 3 of my series about soft tubes modular. Today I'm going to talk about the oscillator module dubbed for A110 VCO. The VCO A110 is an oscillator delivering four different waveforms, saw, square, okay, and pulse, triangle and sine. We might not always be aware of the fact that this oscillator always does its work, even if we don't hear it. It doesn't need any input, any signal to oscillate. Even right now, it's oscillating. Therefore, I only need to connect it to the main output and, at once, I hear what's going on under the hood of the VCO. Let's look at the waveforms then. The two signal analyzers show the wave, the upper graph, and the spectrum, the lower graph. Saw and square come up with a rich analog sound and we see the typical analog uncleanliness, typical analog inaccuracy that makes the sound warm compared to a clean and sterile digital generated saw or square wave. The sine wave, however, is only roughly a sine wave at all and the triangle shows some, let's say, scratches and thorns at the uppermost point of the wave. Both. The, uh, the strange sine wave, sorry, and the slightly deformed triangle are intentional phenomena. Soft tubes modular is a very good software emulation of real hardware depth for modules, and the hardware, the original standard A110 VCO, doesn't really have four different wave generators, but only one a saw wave generator. The other waves are derived from that saw wave, leading to the mentioned inaccuracies. I'll add an audio mixer to the rack and fade one wave into the other to show the effect. Well, what functions does the oscillator module offer? I'll begin with the frequency and tuning. The pitch of the sound we hear when we operate the A110 without any input depends on the range and the tune adjustments. Range transposes the pitch up to two octaves down or up to two octaves up. Tune covers a pitch range of two semitones down to two semitones up, measured from the knob's middle position at 5. I connect the MIDI to CV module to the oscillator to show that on the keyboard.
All in all, the A110 VCO covers the whole range of audible frequencies. The input for control voltage, called CV1, has a 1V per octave characteristic, as we already discovered in the last tutorial. The same has the input called CV2, but only if the knob next to it is adjusted to 10 to maximum. Adjusting the knob to smaller amounts, we get microtonal scales. At about 2.3, the range of an octave contracts to just two semitones, for example. The signal at the CV1 and the signal at the CV2 are simply added up. Therefore, I can get a scale containing no semitones and covering two octaves by using both inputs and adjusting CV2 to 10. Alright, pulse. Pulse width and duty cycle. Mm, the pulse width knob sets the duty cycle of the pulse wave. And, well, okay, do you remember the duty cycle is the time a signal is on or high? It is well, expressed as a percentage rate of the whole cycle of the wave. With the duty cycle of 50%, which corresponds to a knob setting of 5, we get a square wave. Feeding a signal in the jack next to the knob leads to pulse width modulation, for example by an envelope generator. The jack and the knob called PVCV2, pulse with control voltage 2, work analog to the before mentioned jack and knob CV2. Okay, let's talk about sync, also called hard sync. Feeding a signal with a steep upward flank in the sync jack of the oscillator resets the oscillator. Every incoming flank or pulse or trigger forces the oscillator to begin its cycle anew, no matter where in the cycle it actually is. In more professional words, no matter what the actual phase of the oscillator's cycle is, every sync impulse causes a reset to phase zero. I use an LFO to demonstrate this. 
With the NFO's square and saw wave it works, as there are clear flanks in those waveforms, but with the LFO's sine and triangle it doesn't work because of the missing clear upward impulses. But now, look at two oscillators delivering the same audio signal. All adjustments are identical. I feed one oscillator to the right main output and the other to the left. The green curve of the signal analyzer shows the right channel, the blue one shows the left stereo channel. We see that the oscillators are out of phase and the phases drift against each other. But when I connect the square output of one oscillator and the sync input of the other, there is no phase drift anymore. The right oscillator synchronizes the left one. The right, of, uh, sorry, the right oscillator is called the master because it forces the left oscillator, called the slave, to start its cycle when the master wants to. Okay. But what if master and slave are not adjusted to the same frequency? There are two relevant situations, of course. The master's frequency is higher than that of the slave. The master's frequency is lower than that of the slave. With the master's frequency being higher than that of the slave, the pitch of the resulting sound corresponds to the higher frequency of the master and the frequency of the slave influences the timbre, the sound. With the slave's frequency being higher than that of the master, the pitch of the resulting sound corresponds to the higher frequency of the slave, and the master's frequency doesn't influence anything, neither the frequency nor the timbre. Well, some words about output levels. The output level of the A110 is more or less always the same. Triangle and sine wave deliver an output a little lower than the square and saw wave. Remember, there is no amplifier, no gain potentiometer or something like that involved so far. The small differences with different frequencies and different waveforms result from the fact that with some frequencies and some waveforms the energy of the wave is spread across a wider or narrower spectrum. Spreading the same amount of energy across a wider spectrum of frequencies makes the single partials and sometimes even the fundamental reduce their amplitudes by a certain amount. Please watch the lower spectrum analyzer to see what I'm talking about. With 
With the square wave, we have the speciality of different duty cycles. With very high and very low duty cycles, the output level reduces remarkably, of course it does, as we get only short peaks, nearly like trigger impulses. Please notice that the polarity, the region in the graph where, let me say, the party is going on, of course, is different with duty cycles of less than 50% and duty cycles of more than 50%. But this polarity doesn't influence the output level, but other things about which we are going to talk in later videos. And it doesn't influence the output level as the power lies and the peak-to-peak -peak difference, of course. And to avoid a misunderstanding, the absolute levels you see in this video are of course not identical with the real output levels of the A110 as what you see at the level meter and in the analyzer is the result of the whole audio chain including my DOS mixer and my DOS amplifier. A last experiment for today now. I add a second A110 and let it modulate the frequency of the first one. I mentioned frequency modulation in the last video. OK. I'm not going to talk about FM frequency modulation in detail here, that would extremely exceed the matter of the series. If you are interested in a deeper understanding of frequency modulation, please visit my other channel Music VSTs and more. There is a series of workshops about frequency modulation going on called the power of FM. No, I just want to demonstrate how rich the modulus FM sounds can be and how synchronizing both oscillators to each other influence the resulting FM sound. I'll go through the different waveforms and different ranges with and without synchronizing, without any commentary. But please notice the following. If two different waveforms modulate each other, it makes a difference which waveform modulates which other. For example, square modulating sine produces a sound different from sine modulating square. Synchronizing the modulating oscillator and the modulated oscillator makes the sound less dynamic and more unique. To get predictable results, the oscillator which modulates the other should also be the master in the sync chain. And the last word of theory. The oscillator which modulates the other is called the modulator, uh, what a term full of fantasy, <laughs> and the oscillator which is being modulated is called the carrier. Well, there are a lot more of possible experiments and you are not limited to only two VCOs. But you surely will, ha uh, will have got uh, the principles now and so I leave the fun to you. We are working with a modular synth here. There are nearly unlimited ways to combine, to design sounds, to play around and to discover. Enjoy it! Thank you for watching. The next part of this series about soft tubes modular is going to deal with the amplifier and possibly also with the filter module. There is a website of mine at www.rofil-medianet where you will find more information about this series of tutorials and about the modular. There is also a forum there, the Deep Sound Divers Coffee House, where you can discuss my videos. 
please consider liking, sharing and subscribing. And if you really like this video, please think about donating a little to help me making more videos like this one. Have a great day and a good time, Rolf.